On this edition of the News Review, President Donald Trump says the United States will probably relocate some troops from Germany to Poland in, quote, a very strong signal to Russia. By our firm conviction that As I've said many times, Poland is one of the few countries that are fulfilling their obligations under NATO, in particular their monetary obligations. And uh, they asked us if we would send some additional troops. Uh, they're going to pay for that. They'll be paying for the sending of additional troops, and we'll probably be moving them from Germany uh, to Poland. Uh, we're going to be reducing Germany very substantially, down to about 25,000 troops. We actually had 52,000, but we'll be moving it down to about 25,000. In a joint press conference with visiting Polish counterpart Andrzej Duda, Trump said the U.S. will sign a defense cooperation agreement with Poland. Due to praise the decision, claiming U.S. troops' presence is needed against Russia, Washington and Warsaw have been in talks over establishing a permanent U.S. base in the Eastern European country. NATO promised Russia in 1997 not to set up permanent bases in uh, the former Eastern Bloc. Germany has warned that any such plan should be part of a pact with Russia. Earlier this month, Moscow... Uh, denounced Poland's calls for U.S. presence as irresponsible, vowing to take comprehensive measures in response. Joining us on the program, we have publisher and editor of Politics First, Marcus Papadopoulos, who's joining us from the British capital, London. And joining us from Edinburgh, we have writer and political commentator John White. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Let's start off with uh, Mr. Papadopoulos in London. Uh, give us your thoughts on uh, the recent uh, uh, comments coming from the U.S. president. He said that what we're doing in Germany is a strong signal to Russia. It seems that despite uh, earlier promises, NATO definitely has its sights set on a further eastward expansion. Well, the deployment of American forces to Poland is a highly significant and dangerous move by the Americans, and it will undoubtedly herald the formal death of the NATO-Russia founding act of 1997. And I say the formal death because the NATO-Russia founding act of 1997 actually died an informal death some years ago. Let me explain what I am saying. So in 1997, NATO and Russia signed the NATO-Russia Founding Act. And in this agreement, the Americans stipulated that they would not permanently deploy either American forces or American nuclear forces in the new NATO members, specifically, of course, uh, Eastern Europe, which once were, uh, comprised the Warsaw Pact. <clears throat> now, by given Donald Trump's decision to permanently deploy American forces to Poland, that is a serious violation of the NATO-Russia founding act. However, I did say moments ago that informally, the NATO-Russia founding act died some years ago. It died some years ago following the Western-backed coup in Ukraine and Russia's response to that. Because ever since the Western-backed coup in Ukraine, there has been a permanent uh, rotating military presence of NATO forces in countries such as Poland, which actually is a violation of the NATO-Russia founding act. So informally, the NATO-Russia Founding Act died in 2014. But in light of Donald Trump's decision to permanently deploy American forces to Poland, we can now say that, officially speaking, the NATO-Russia Founding Act of 1997 is dead in the water. John White, Russia has already uh, vowed uh, to respond to this uh to this uh, incident, uh, are, uh, uh, do you think that NATO and Russia are now on a, a collision course with uh, uh, none other than the United States being, uh, being behind the steering wheel? Well, indeed, yes. And the West only has uh, or has to be grateful that in uh, Moscow right now, we have one of the more measured and moderate governments possible in that country under the auspices and under the rubric of Vladimir Putin and his foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov because there are hardliners 
in Russia who would take a much more robust posture towards these repeated provocations emanating from Washington uh, and with its, uh, its various allies in Eastern Europe that have yet to get over their historical animus towards Russia. But we have to understand that as November approaches and a new presidential election looms large, that we will see many more of these ever more capricious and mendacious uh, gestures from Donald Trump, a man who is clearly the most ignorant and the most anti-intellectual US president in modern history. Not only that, he actually wallows in his ignorance and in his anti-intellectualism. So that is a very dangerous combination, combination indeed. This will play to his huge vanity to be able to bestow, uh, be, be bestow these gifts towards these client states like an, a potentate from antiquity. Uh, as for Poland, this will only imperil its security as the demarche of the Western Ukrainians did back in 2014, uh, and as the uh, the various machination of the Baltic states on Russia's border. These countries have no choice, whether they like it or not, other than to establish positive relations with its Russian neighbour. This is not a matter of ideology, it is a matter of simple geography. Marcus Papadopoulos, uh, the court, uh, the ball is basically now in Russia's court. What kind of a response are you expecting to see from Moscow? Well, Russia will adopt an asymmetrical uh, response to NATO's provocations. For example, we have seen the Russian military increase its presence on the western borders. We have seen the Russian military budget increase substantially. We have also seen the Russian nuclear arsenal expand, in which the Russians have now um, uh, designed and deployed and tested and are in full service new ICBMs and also drones which can deploy nuclear warheads in the air and in the sea. There is a uh, unofficial um, arms race between America and Russia. That is a conventional arms race and a nuclear arms race. Uh, Russia will take all steps necessary to ensure its national security is not threatened. And if we look at Ukraine, under no circumstances will the Kremlin countenance NATO, uh, Ukraine joining the ranks of NATO. And when I say under no circumstances will Russia countenance Ukrainian membership of NATO, I mean that Russia will take any measure whatsoever to prevent it's a very, very dangerous situation which the world is facing. And it is the fault of the Americans. If we just go back to 1990, when the Soviet Union gave its consent to West Germany and East Germany reuniting, uh, George Bush and James Baker gave a verbal assurance to the imbecile Mikhail Gorbachev that, Amer that NATO would not expand eastwards beyond Germany's borders. And I call Mikhail Gorbachev an imbecile because he did not demand that the Americans uh, uh, demand the Americans that they put that, that assurance into writing. So the Soviet Union consented to West and East Germany okay. reuniting. And there was no written assurance for the Soviet Union that NATO would not, that would not advance eastwards beyond Germany's borders. So yes, on the face of it, we right. can blame America heavily, but we cannot forget that Mikhail Gorbachev played a significant role in NATO's expansion eastwards. John, White, one last question before we leave you here. Do you think, in light of the comments, the recent comments coming from the United States, that Germany wasn't carrying its weight uh, within NATO, that uh, the Germans could be a little bit bitter about this troop relocation to Poland now? Well, Germany's already had, uh, always had, since the Second World War, very positive relations with Moscow. Certainly today, they have strong economic ties, and I think Angela Merkel is more minded to move towards uh, rapprochement with Moscow and away from our Trump administration, which it is no, it is no secret she uh, holds in complete disdain and contempt, as is the case with regards to Emmanuel Macron in Paris. They understand that it, it, Vladimir Putin is much more predictable. He is much more a serious politician 
and Moscow is a force for stability in Europe, whereas today Washington is a force for instability. But this demarche on the part of Washington in Eastern Europe is a symptom of its weakness. It's lost all influence, it's commanding influence in the Middle East, and it's trying to shore up its fading influence in Europe using these uh, hodgepodge of Eastern European allies run by these ideological regimes that, as I say, are yet to get over their historical animus towards Russia and are trying to use Washington to c conduct that animus today. It's a big mistake. It's a, it's a stupid uh, error on the part of a Trump administration, which is all bluster and no substance. And I think the Russians will see it in that way, albeit they will take the necessary measures, which Marcus Papadopoulos so eloquently describes in response. All right, thanks a lot, gentlemen. John White, writer and political commentator, joining us from Edinburgh, also uh, joining us from London, uh, publisher and editor of Politics First, Marcus Papadopoulos. Uh, with that, it brings us to an end here on this edition of Press TV's News Review. But do stay tuned. There's plenty more to come. Bye for now.